Okay, everybody. Let's put some of these things down in our notes. And then talk about how we use the mold today. All right, so this just summarizes um, what we've dressed. Okay. Um, with our blinks right here, starting at, oh, there's no reduction. Starting at the bottom right here, dimensional analysis. Okay. What is a mole? It's a counting number. Right? It's a counting number just like a dozen. Okay, so a mole is a counting number. Uh, it actually has a name. They kind of did it based off the person who actually didn't discover the number, um, but he's one of the first people to propose this idea of grouping atoms. Um, so it actually, it didn't get named after him until long after he passed away, which that's how a lot of things are, but they named it after him, I guess, as, what's the word? Tribute to him, right? Um, so it's known as Avogadro's number. That was his name, Avogadro. Avogadro. You don't really need to know that, like, but just if you hear it, you should know it's the same thing. And then one mole always equals... 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So that's what it equals. Just like a dozen always equals 12, a mole always equals this. So in a sense, when people say, oh, Avogadro's number, they're referring to this. Um, what, here's a joke for you, ready? What was Avogadro's favorite snack? No, guacamole. Because a mold. Oh. And like guacamole is made from avocados. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His name sounds like. Let me try it. Right, ready? What was Avogadro's favorite snack? Guacamole. Oh, this is his real name. No, not even better to say Alright, moving on. All right, so let's get to this idea of how we mentioned and shown, right? Who was it, Kaysen? You were the one who kind of talked about this one, right? Of how the, diff the reason why this one's so much bigger on mole is because the molecule is a bigger size. Now, this table I think I was talking with last time, um, one of the questions on our warm-up was, how do I know this is a mole? Or like, I can't actually count atoms. And do you know a mole is so big, if you tried to count that high, you'd die before you got there. There's not enough seconds in your life to count to a mole. That's how big that number is. Um, so obviously, I can't measure this out by counting. And so let's learn about how we actually can measure so we can use a mole. And it's through this thing known as a molar mass. Um, so through proportions, we're able to determine the mass of one mole of a compound or an element. Okay. The thing is, is all units are humanly derived. Right? Humans just decided, hey, this is going to be a foot, this distance, right? And we said, all right, this weight will be a pound, right? We just decided on units. And so with the gram unit, the gram unit was decided very particularly to link proportionally to an atom. So if I look at the periodic table right here, right, we've talked about before that this is the atomic mass of carbon. This is how much a single atom of carbon weighs if you're dealing in the unit of an AMU, which is an atomic mass unit, teeny, 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 teeny small measurement. This number is exactly proportionate to one mole of it as well. So this equals, in grams, one mole of carbon. So if I want to find the mass of a single mole, it's on the periodic table. Okay, so for carbon, the molar mass is 12.01 grams for every one mole. If you want to draw like a little arrow to remind you, like I just came from here. Um, we're going to round, I think your PR table's already rounded that way, but we'll just round all of ours to, you can round them to two decimals. It'll just be our kind of standard rounding as we do this math. Okay, so aluminum, find aluminum on your PR table and put your finger on it. Aluminum's molar mass would be 26.98 grams in every one mole. All right, for 
front, hopefully easy smiley face. Do zinc by yourself real quick. how I got that. Okay, skip down with me and let's come try this one here, number four. Okay, so on number four, it has a lot more pieces, but the process is still going to be the same. So I have magnesium and three of them, so I need to find magnesium's mass. So Mg has a mass of 24.31. And that number needs to be times by three. Now, the phosphorus is inside parentheses. So similar to math, we have to distribute that number within. Okay, so I need to find the mass of phosphorus, which is 30.97. And it's going to times by two. And then oxygen, which is our 16 again, for that one, I'm going to times it by 8. And then once I do all those, add it all up, and my molar mass. Questions on how to do with parentheses? Hopefully it just feels longer, not harder. I don't know the list. The answer should be 262.87. So you should get once you type that in. Okay, try number five. Oh, there's something missing on mine. Is there two on yours right here? No. It's missing two. Okay, put a two there. That's why there's five. Okay, force my face, try number five with your table buddies, and then we'll check it here in a few minutes. Okay, ready, go. Oh, calcium. Oh, and I forgot some calculators out. Bernie's calculators multiple times today. If you don't have one, I'll fix it. Right here, 
doing any calculators? Yeah, you're right. I still need calculators. Yeah. 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 I love that. There's supposed to be a way, actually, with these where you can actually, like, hook it to a computer and, like, save it as your notes. Anybody need calculators here? Once you have an answer, compare with your table. If it doesn't match, then figure out who made the mistake. Once you think you have it, and everyone at your table has it, I want you to write your final answer as a table on one of the boards. That will kind of help me know that your table's done, okay? Brian's hair? Ooh. I saw it on the cut back. I saw it on the cut back. Uh, huh? He has a new hairstyle. I have no. He just showed us. Yeah. I guess, we'll see how many games he shows up to, I guess. If I ever show up, I'm not going to be sitting next to him. <laughs> So it's just like, that's just the difference. In the end, like, on the quiz, there's like a range of like what do we all get? I got one of you. They're only supposed to round it to about one eight. They all were like this. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's thousand. Yeah. yeah. One, two, yeah, ten hundred thousand. <laughs> I don't know what that's supposed to be. 
Y'all want the theory? I don't think I typed it right. What did you say? Oh, this is and what did you guys get? Well, oh, that's exciting. Oh, that's exciting. So, what did you get? 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 What Oh, you forgot about two outside. Oh, yeah. But, like, your logic was sound, you just missed that. Oh, okay, that's what I missed, too. Because did you get the same thing, 107? Okay, if you got one, that's based on how many is If you got 158 point something, have a smiley short print. Um, I will tell you there is there is an allowed slight difference of the decimal um, based on maybe how you rounded your numbers. It could vary slightly, but you're still accurate. Okay? All right, questions on molar mass? Okay, come back up here, everybody. And let's talk about how we use this molar mass now as a conversion unit. Okay? of two things connected, right? One mole equals that many grams, and this many grams equals that many moles. We can use it as a conversion unit to find any value we want. Because often in an experiment, you're not always gonna need one mole of a substance. Sometimes you might need more than one mole, sometimes you might need less than a mole. But using this relationship can get us the calculation of what we need to use, okay? Um, this is actually something I do almost any time I have to do a demonstration for you guys. Because I need to know, right, if I want this reaction to happen, I have to measure out a certain amount of moles. And so I have to do this calculation beforehand to know, all right, how many grams do I need to measure out? Because we work in moles, but we have to measure in grams, right? There's not a scale that measures moles because moles is a counting unit, okay? Um, all right, let's go ahead, let's see here. Okay, so with our relationship of grams to mole, okay, go ahead and flip your page over. We'll do these three practice problems here, okay? So just like before, you want to start with what's given and then use your conversion unit to get where you want, okay? So my given is I have 42.19 grams of potassium. So write that down first, everybody. Okay, so grams and potassium is K, so I'm just going to write a symbol because that's way easier. Now, once again, I'm going to be using different colors very strategically to emphasize the pattern that's always there. So I would encourage you in your notes to maybe have this as well to help you remind you. Okay, so I'm trying to go from grams and connect it to moles, so let's set up our conversion. Start with what's given, set up your conversion factor. What unit goes on the bottom is always the unit you're trying to change. So I'm trying to change grams of potassium into moles of potassium. Oh, I meant to change my color there. My apologies. Let's go Christmas here. Okay. The unit on top is the one I'm going to. The unit on the bottom is the one I'm trying to change. Question, Kate. Uh, did you just put the N O L or something? Oh, yeah. I don't know why, but chemists like have an abbreviation for a mole, which is like, why do you abbreviate a four-letter word to a three-letter word? But it is like a universally accepted abbreviation, so I do it too. So you can leave off the E if you want. Good observation, though, Kate. Thank you. I forgot about that. Chemist or simple people. Okay, now the numbers that go in here are what should make these two things equivalent. Just like we said before, inches to feet, right? What make those two things equal? So, gram to mole, it's 
on the bottom, but it's still, you can flip a fraction right however you want. Go to the periodic table, what's the mass for one mole of potassium? Yeah, 39.1, if we round for two decimals. So 39.10 for every one mole of potassium. Calculator-wise, I'd start with this and divide by that. Questions on my setup? I got 1.08 moles. All answers should have a unit and a label with them, right? Because these numbers give them the meaning that they have. Questions on this one? Okay, let's try number two together. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Sharon. On the article says how many moles of carbon? What the? Yeah. Well, that's awkward. Mm. Change, since we just did potassium, change it to potassium. Oh, just cross out that. I see what you're saying now, Shayla. Just cross out that weird carbon. Or like change that carbon to potassium. <laughs> we actually will, after Christmas break, we'll actually learn how to go from moles of one thing to moles of another. But not today. So thank you for clarifying that. That does make that question confusing. Okay, try this one for me, everybody. So we're gonna do a, how many moles of water are in 37.10 grams of water? Okay, so just like before, start with what's given. Okay, write down what's given. Stay with me, everybody. We're just going to do one more together, and then one on your own, and then we'll work on the homework. Okay? The unit I want to change always goes on the bottom. So grams of H2O, and I'm trying to change it into moles of H2O. The thing that makes a mole of anything equal to a gram of something is the molar mass. So we need to find the molar mass of H2O, which we actually already found in our problem before. But if we didn't have it, then we would find it by adding it up, right? So it was 18.02. But if you want to make a note, this is found by adding up, right, the periodic table. And how many moles is that equivalent to? Just one, right? Because that's one mole of water, right? So that's how I measured out this little cup right here. Might be a little less because some leaked out. But that's how I measured out a mole of water, is I just measured out 18.02 grams. So I knew that was a mole of water. Okay? All right, and then, seen before, since it's on the bottom, we'll divide it out. I got 2.06 moles of water. Questions? Okay. Try example number three. Once you think you've got it, raise your hand. I'll come give you the pass off. Once you get the pass off from me, then you can start working on tonight's homework, which is just this idea of conversions. It's called mole conversions. We're just doing the side that says gram to mole, so it's only one side of the worksheet. Okay, um, so it should, you should be able to get, like the goal would be you can get this done in class and then maybe even have time to keep working on your mole project. Okay, all right. Get to work, you'll work as your table, but let me know once you're ready to pass off. I'll come check it out.
USC to all the color off of it. Who decided to make my profile? Brother? It wasn't me. I 